Hello, welcome to Hear the Docs, a series for Godot Engine 4, where I present a topic after researching documentation, source code, and examples. Before continuing, I would like to let you know that this series will take influence from the comments section. If anyone has a topic they think is useful or difficult to understand, let me know below and I may include it in a future video. If you like the series, leave a like as it helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe to get notifications when I come out with more videos in the series. The class I am covering is the worker thread pool. If you take a look at the documentation, you'll find that it's incomplete. But I feel like there's a lot we can cover here. Before I begin though, let's cover some basics. When talking about a game, it's important to know about the main loop, also called the game loop. The game loop is the overall flow control for an entire game. It's called a loop because the game keeps doing a series of actions over and over again until the user quits. Those actions could depend on user input and other factors. There is one main game loop, but it's possible to run code outside of this loop. You could run code in parallel by creating a thread. A thread is a small set of instructions designed to be scheduled and executed by the CPU independently of the parent process. For example, a program may open a thread waiting for a specific event to occur or running a separate job, allowing the main thread to continue performing other tasks. Creating a thread is an expensive operation and can slow down your game. Luckily, there is the new singleton worker thread pool. The worker thread pool allocates threads at the beginning of your game. Once your game is started, the threads will be ready to handle tasks for you. Before covering the API, Let's go over configuring the worker thread pool in the project settings. Here we're in our project. Come up to the menu and click project. Next you'll want to click project settings. Enable advanced settings. In the settings tree, look for the threading section and click worker thread pool. You have three options for configuring the worker thread pool. The maximum number of threads in the thread pool. This is the number of threads that will be created when your game is started. Applying a value of negative 1 will create a thread for each processor in your machine. Use system threads for low priority tasks. This tells the worker thread pool to create new threads for low priority tasks. Disabling this feature will run low priority tasks in the thread pool. This ratio configures how many low priority tasks will be run in the thread pool when this checkbox is disabled. Let's look at examples for both. For the first example, I'm only going to create five threads. So you can see in this example, there's two queues, high priority and low priority tasks. Green represents high priority and red represents low priority. As tasks are entered into the high priority queue, you'll see stars appear next to their name once they begin processing. Because I only have five threads, a maximum of five tasks can be run at the same time. In low priority mode though, you'll notice that tasks get started immediately. This is because a new thread is created for each task as the job is submitted. Let's look at it with this setting disabled. In this example, I'll use the default of minus one to generate as many threads as my computer can handle. As you can see, the high priority queue will be executing at most 10 tasks at a time. The difference in this mode is low priority tasks will not get executed in the low priority queue. They only get executed when there is enough space in the high priority queue to add them. Because the ratio was 30%, this means that most three low priority tasks can be in the high priority queue at one time. Choosing between these options is project dependent and up to you to discover the best settings for your game. For the rest of this video, I'll be covering the API of the worker thread pool. I have some sample code here where I overrode the process function of a node. The process function is called during processing of your game, during the game's main loop. Each iteration of the main loop will call every node's process function. In this case, I call a function called dowork, which does some processing on a list of enemies. Let's say that the function process AI as a slow function and causes our game to lag because it blocks the main game loop. 
Let's look at how we can use the worker thread pool to solve this issue. One option is to use the worker thread pool to create tasks, and I've done so here. I call a function called add task. The function takes a callable, the job to execute. In this case, I could pass the existing do work function and it will process our enemies like before. The second argument here is whether or not the task is low or high priority. Supplying a value false here means it's a low priority task. The third value is the name of the task. This is mostly used for debugging purposes. Once the task is created, you'll be given a task ID, which is just a simple integer. With this task ID, there's two other functions you can call. Wait for task completion, which actually blocks the game loop to wait for the task to be completed. In most cases, this is not ideal, but I'll solve that later. Another function is just to check if the task is completed. This just returns a Boolean value, and you can use that to determine if a task is completed. Another option for the worker thread pool is to create a group task. A group task is used to process a number of elements. You'll notice that process AI is now called directly. This is important because process AI takes an integer. The integer is the element number in the task. You tell how many elements there are in the second argument. The third argument tells it how many tasks to spawn to handle this group. A task is basically just another thread. The next argument, again, is the priority. Applying a value false here means it's a low priority. And the final value is a string used for debugging. Once you add the task, you'll be given an ID, which works with three other functions. You can check how many elements have been processed in that group. You can wait for the group to finish processing or you can simply check if processing has finished. One thing to note about tasks. I mentioned how waiting for a task can block the main game loop. In this example, I'm calling a job, which also creates another task. That job waits for another task that it created to finish. Based on the code that I read, this job will not just wait idly by. Itself will become a worker processing jobs on the queue until the designated task is completed. I did not find code that looked like it would do that for group tasks, so use that at your own risk. Now I'll cover some best practices that I have found for using the worker thread pool. The first is managing jobs using a state machine. If you're not aware already, state machines are a great way to manage tasks in a game. My state machine has four different states. The initial state is ready. This means that the code is ready to run the job. The state is updated in the process function, meaning that it is updated each time the game loop is executed. The ready state is where a task is added. I add a task to do my work and immediately change my state to running. While the game loop continues, the state will be running. While it's running, I check if the task is completed. Once completed, I change the state to done. As the loop continues, it eventually will encounter the done state. I tell it to wait for a timeout of one second. But before doing that, I immediately change the state to waiting. After the timeout, I change the state back to ready, and then a new task will be added during the next chuck. As you can see, this is a great way to add tasks with some delay between processing. Another useful technique is to use a singleton to manage tasks. So previously for tasks and group tasks, we only had an integer to check on the status of our task. Here I want to use dedicated classes in order to check our status. In order to add the singleton, go to project and project settings. Click auto load with the folder icon. Choose your singleton object, click open, and name your singleton. In my case, I name my singleton task manager. Click add, and then you can close. The source code for the singleton will be available on GitHub, and you can copy it and use it in your own projects. Let me cover it briefly. First, I create a class for tasks. It stores the task ID, and it has a signal completed. The signal will be emitted when the job is completed. I have a constructor where I assign the task ID to the supplied ID. I can get how many elements are processed, the result will only ever be 0 or 1 because a task only represents one job. 
You can check if the task is completed, and you can also wait for the task to be completed. Next, I have a group task. It extends the task because it has a lot of the same functionality, but instead of calling the task functions, it calls group functions. So again, it has the specific implementation for getting the number of elements that are processed. It has a way to check if the group is completed, and it has a way to wait for the group. So as I mentioned, the singleton manages tasks. So it has a list of tasks that it has created. I created two functions similar to the functions that exist on the worker thread pool. So for add task, I have create task, and for add group task, I have create group task. The function arguments are identical in both cases. The only extra thing is, instead of returning integer, it returns a task or it returns a group task. These tasks are appended to the list of tasks that the singleton manages. So the neat thing about this is I overrode the process function in our game loop. During each iteration, it'll get the list of tasks that are completed and all the completed tasks, it'll emit that completed signal. And this is actually a very nice feature and I'll show you why. So our code here looks very similar to before, but instead of having an integer here, we have a strongly typed class. So we can check how many elements were processed. And instead of waiting for our task to be completed, we can use signals to asynchronously wait for our task to be completed. This means we can wait without blocking the game loop and other code gets a chance to execute. And finally, we could check if our task is completed. Similar for groups, we get a strongly typed class with helpful functions and a signal we could wait for that doesn't block the game loop. That's all I have to say about the worker thread pool. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or feel I may have left out any important details. Don't forget to like the video and leave a suggestion for future topics. Subscribe to get notified. I also am on Twitter, where I challenge myself to post Godot tips for 100 days straight. Take it easy.